Greg, Ryan Hennessy, CWVTM WVTM 13 in Birmingham. I spoke to you a few years ago. I said, how do you replace Nick Saban? You said, I'm just going to kick that can down the road until I actually remember. do it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, you had to do it. Um, there's been so many, so much talk the last three days. We've been refreshing Twitter rumors. But you said, when I talk next, it's going to be the next head coach. Was this your first choice? And can you rewind the last 48 hours and what you did to get this next head coach? Yeah, so... Anytime, I'll put it to you this way. I, I don't ever look at it as first choice, second choice, third choice, okay? I really don't. God's honest truth. I look at it as you go through the process, you work on plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, and that's not a rank order, okay? When I sit down with somebody on one day, and, I'm, and in, in my mind I may feel like, hey, um, this one may make the most sense. Uh, as soon as you sit down with somebody, you have a feel very quickly. And... What I'll tell you, as soon as I sat down with Coach DeBoer and, and Nicole was there and his wife and then Regina, uh, when we sat down uh, two days ago in a hotel room in, in Seattle, uh, I was like, not that long into him, like, this could be our guy. And, uh, and you want to make sure you do due diligence and all those things, and, and that's what we did, and thrilled that we're standing here today with him as our new coach. Um, R.L. Schaefer, CBS 42 News in Birmingham. When you talk about setting a precedent, Coach Saban did set that. But for Coach DeBoer moving forward, what do you think his precedent is going to be like, and how is he going to continue the tradition and legacy of a program like this moving forward? Yeah, I think that what, what, why he's here today is because he was uh, excited, uh, honored to take on the task of, of a pr program with the tr tradition that it is. Uh, you know, I, I'll tell you this story. I, I, uh, uh, as you all know, I have ties out that way. And uh, Mike Bellotti, who used to be the football coach at Oregon, took him to the Rose Bowl, coached at a really high level. Uh, he and his wife, Colleen, came to our Tennessee game, I think, three years ago now or two years ago now. We're, we were at home this year, so two years ago now. And uh, he, he – so think about the level that he coached at, right? And uh, they came to the game with Regina and I, and they got to see everything and the, you know, the upper decks and just, just the environment, the walk of champions and just the, pa the pageantry around this all. And he's like, holy cow, Greg. It's, it, and so the tagline for the SEC is it just means more. Uh, who doesn't want to have that opportunity? Who doesn't want to try to take on that challenge? Listen, I didn't grow up in Alabama, right? I didn't, uh, but literally, from my youngest years, I remember watching Alabama, watching Coach Bryant come out of the tunnel, and when you know when Keith Jackson and Coach Broyles would call the games, and that that was often in, in San Diego, California, and then later on in, in Oregon, and uh, I was like, what an awesome place! I didn't know I was going to be so fortunate to be here one day, but if you know anything about college athletics, if you know anything about college football, this it's the pinnacle right here, and. If you want a chance to have a be a part of uh, of going after and being a part of the the, the really special things in our country, uh, and one of the special things in our country, you want to be at Alabama, and I think Coach DeBoer and his family feel the same way. Ryan Brown right. from the hello, Denver. Ryan. How are you, Greg? Tired, okay. but I'm okay. Yeah, we all are. That's right. Uh, do you recall the first time Kalen DeBoer came on your radar screen, and what made it what made him appealing to you? Yeah, so. Uh, one of the things, I, I told this story next door. One of the things my dad taught me early on, because for those of you who don't, don't know, my dad was an athletics director for 29 years, so I grew up around this. Um, and uh, he, he, But I remember early on, because he knew I was interested in this, and I'd say, hey, Dad, tell me, you know, give me advice on all sorts of different things. But one of the ones that stuck forever was watch coaches coach. Okay? So the story I tell, and it's actually a little bit tied to Coach DeBoer, is my first full-time job in athletics was a regional fundraiser at Oregon. And I would, I would had all of Southern Oregon and all of California, okay? And so I had a lot of windshield time, as you can imagine, driving around. And, but I'd get up to Eugene, and I would go watch football practice whenever I could. Well, Mike Bellotti had just become the head coach, who I mentioned earlier. And he had, uh, he had in just a few years span, he had Jeff Tedford, who coached the board, worked for at Fresno, who I think was here in 17, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he had Chris Peterson, who became the Washington coach. He had Dirk Cutter, who became an NFL head coach. And I got to watch some really high-level coaches coach. And I watched, and I, you, you learn how to watch uh, body language. You learn how to watch their communication skills. Uh, how do they come across, you know, they, are they smart people, right? 
And, uh, and so I watch a lot of coaches. That's one of the things I do. I, I, I literally sit in my office because I get there so early. I literally sit in my office some mornings before I work out and I watch YouTube videos of coaches. And I watch interviews that take place. So I don't know the first time I ever watched Coach DeBoer, but I, I would guess it was probably um, three, four years ago, something like that, where he was at Fresno. And you just, you just, you know, I never wanted Coach Saban to retire. You mentioned Ryan, kick the can down the far, as far down the road as you can. But it would have been irresponsible of me if, if we weren't working on being prepared when that day came, hoping it would never come. And so, um, you know, I, I probably watch hundreds of hours of that every year. Emily Gray also from the next round. When you look back on the last 48 hours or so, what will you remember most, do you think? Well, I, uh, what will I remember most? Um, when you go, th when you, that's, that's a good question. When you go through this, and, I, and you know, I, I'm in my 17th year of being an AD, so I, I've done this a few times. Uh, you're just, you, you, you think about, as much, you know, probably as much as anything, you think about the responsibility that you have that so many people are, are counting on you to be a, a good leader and, and make good decisions and be thoughtful in the process. And I think, first and foremost, I thought about the guys on our team, okay? Next, I thought about our entire department and the impact that our football program has there. Next, I thought about our fan base. We've got a couple of those, right? And, and you know, the way they support our university and care and the passion that they have, if I didn't take their feelings into account, not that I was sitting there reading message boards because I don't do that and that wouldn't have been very pro productive on my part, um, but passion here is like none other. And so if you don't feel a responsibility to, to take that, the, the steps of what you're doing seriously, then shame on me. And so, you know, that's, when I get through each of, the, each of the coaching searches I've been a part of, and I think, I mean, if I'm hiring a, a tennis coach, right, the young men or the young women on that tennis team, they're, they're counting on you. They're counting on you and, and their future and what they've done, and so you better take that seriously too. Uh, but I also understand there may be a few more cameras that show up when you announce the football coach than, than others. Hey, Greg. Carl Prey, there are WAFF TV in Huntsville. Hey, Carl. Uh, when you're trying to find the right guy for this job, um, did you ever think, in your opinion, to try to continue the trajectory of what Alabama football could be as an organization moving forward um, down the line? Yeah, I mean, if you I, – I always remember we were, we were upstairs in the zone my first year here, and Coach Saban spoke after one of our scrimmages and to the Red Elephant Clubs, I think, what it was. And, and somebody asked him, it was a really good question, kind of one I was going to ask him at some point that I hadn't to that point. But so this is 2017, right? And and uh, they asked him. They said, "How do you how do you keep that same drive, that same um, just focus and ability to continue to get try to get better every single day?" And he said, "You know, I kind of look at it a little bit like a ladder. That I take a step, and there's another step ahead of me, and then there's another step ahead of me after that." And so, one of one of the one of my and I said this next year one of my favorite sayings and probably the only uh, original quote I've ever had, um, but is, you know, I. The only thing I got figured out is I don't have it all figured out, and so I try to grow every single day in the decision making and what I do, and and I have a responsibility in my role to serve, our university. Uh, serve our student athletes and serve our fans, and as long it, it, if I ever stop taking that responsibility seriously, then shame on me, and, and somebody else needs to do this job. And so, as you look at what's ahead and how do you grow the program, you got every day you're either getting better, or you're getting worse, you're not maintaining. And as you get older and get more gray hair, right, Gary? Uh, yeah, you just Gary and I have that in common. Yeah. Um, I. I I knew he could handle it. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. You know, you you do you do get a little more wisdom with the gray hair. That's why Ryan doesn't have any gray hair, right? That's right. No, I'm just kidding, Ryan. And uh, but hey, you better you better get after it every single day and, and and give great effort in what takes place. And if you do those things, more often than not, you're going to make better decisions. And you're not going to bat a thousand. Nobody does, right? 
Um, they're you know not trying to hopefully be offensive here. You know if you have a, if you have a faith in in Christ, you believe there was one perfect human being, right? And uh, and so uh, you know I'm I, I, we have a responsibility to create a vision and do things to give us the best opportunity to succeed long term and continue to get better. Yes, sir. Gary, gray hair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here comes the zinger at me. Uh, no, no, really. Coach DeBoer talked about, you know, obviously the immediacy of putting a staff together. Right. Uh, he's got a staff there. There'll be other coaches that are interested. There's some great staff members here and support staff members. Will you and maybe even Coach Saban talk to Coach DeBoer about staff members here, or will he have to ask we you? Already have. We already okay. have. Yeah. Uh, you, you know what? One of the somebody is going to ask me. The, will ask me the question next door. Why, you know, for a long time, the media, and I don't blame you uh, writing this or saying this, would say, well, you know, whoever, who's going to want to replace him, right? And I've, I've looked at it as you better find somebody that doesn't see that as a, as a negative, but sees, sees that instead as a, as a challenge. What an opportunity. Um, and almost immediately, both, both from Coach DeBoer and Nicole, I could sense a comfort level in who they are and a humility in who they are and also a confidence in who they are. That's what you're looking for to have somebody to have that balance. Look, think of the impact that Miss Terry's made, right? That's, you know, Nicole's not going to be Miss Terry. She shouldn't be. She needs to be Nicole DeBoer. And Coach DeBoer needs to be Coach DeBoer, not Coach Saban. Um, and, and I sense that right away and sit down and talking to him. Oh, so so staff members. So staff members, uh, yeah, both of us have, have already talked with them about it. Is there an interest that from your position to keep some of the sure here? Yep, yep. But at the same time, too, if I don't have the confidence in the head coach to manage their their staff, and I got the wrong head coach, right? Yes, sir. Hey, Greg. Uh, Jamal Kennedy at WCFA 12 News in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, Coach DeBoer has coached, you know, all over the place from high school to NAIA to FCS and then eventually to FBS. Uh, what does his, uh, his coaching journey tell you about the kind of person that he is? Well, I, I, first of all, I think he's committed to the game of football and, and has a passion and belief in it, which is what you want in, in a head coach. I also saw as a, per, a person that's, that's willing to take on challenges, right? And, and have success in taking on those challenges. And so I, I see, I see uh, a, a, a person, a coach, a family that has embraced that journey and, uh, and where when you say you get an opportunity to be the head football coach at the University of Alabama and see that as a, what, what a unique and special opportunity that is, um, he, uh, you know, he, he very much is uh, somebody that uh, – has, and, and then on top of that, just looking at across his academics, his 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 approach to recruiting, um, you know, I, I had to be a little careful this time. I, one of the tricks I do is trying to call former players, um, and uh, I had to not set off a bunch of alarms, right? But I still was able to get some feedback out there from people that had played for him or and worked with him. I'll, I'm not going to tell you who it is, but I got a text message from somebody inside the Washington Athletic Department yesterday who I've known for a long time. And she said, I used to like you. <laughs> and she said, we're devastated inside this department because of, of and, and, and she said, but we're, but we're happy for him too, um, because what a good person he is within the walls of the entire University of Washington Athletic Department. Uh, Nick Brooks with WTV Wide on in Dothan. Uh, obviously a, a big week for you guys. Um, you know, you look at uh, Coach DeBoer's resume, um, what sticks out to you the most of what he's done over the past two seasons or whether it's been the past 20 years as a coach and um, kind of why you made the hire? Yeah, just, I mean, you look, he, he, he took over a challenging situation at Washington. Most of the time, most of the time you're not replacing somebody the caliber of Nick Saban, right? And so most of the time when a head job is open, there's, there's challenge with it. And then look what he did in his two years there, right? And did it in this modern times, the transfer portal, and everything else that we're that we're dealing with as a reality right now. And and then on top of that, you just look at his development of, of the guys that have played for him, and his teams continue to get better. And uh, and so I, you know, there there are a lot of parts when you 
so when I sit down with a coach, and I, and I tell this to young coaches who are saying, hey, when they come to me for advice and say, what, what are you looking for in interviews and such? So it's, real, it's really not that complicated. If you want to be a head coach, you need to explain to me from A to Z, academics to zone defense, and everything in between. And you better, when, especially when you haven't been a head coach before, you better be able to explain to me how you're going to handle each of those areas in a, in a very um, concise time. When, when we hired Dan Mullen at Mississippi State, I hired him at 2.30 in the morning at the Embassy Suites in Buckhead, right? We, we sat down at 9.30 that night. Five hours later, I said, I think I want to hire you. I, I hadn't slept then either. Slept a couple hours, and I think we made it official like 6 in the morning. And, uh, but I could tell early on this guy had a plan that was laid out and, he, and was very smart. And he had a lot of success over there, right? And then ended up going to Florida. And, and, and you know, the year before he got let go, he was in the SEC championship game, right? So, um, you know, and so you look, that, that's, so I had somebody tell me this time, hey, why don't you just do it by Zoom? I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, uh, I learned so much. I learned so much by sitting down and talking to somebody and having watching body language and watching facial expressions and, you know, tone of voice and all those different things. And, um, and it, it, you know, I, Zoom is, is certainly helpful in a lot of ways, but you can't make a decision like this by, you know, saying, hey, we'll, we'll set up a Zoom. I'll talk to you in a couple hours, right? You, know, you, you got to get in front of people. Hey, Greg, Johnny Kahn, then ABC 3340 Sports in Birmingham. Um, with respect to the ever-changing landscape of college athletics with NIL and Transfer Portal, during the interview process, um, how integral was it that you had a guy that was going to embrace the current climate and, for lack of a better term, be willing to play ball? Yeah, well, uh, Coach Saban had a great line that he said over the years that, you know, the dinosaurs didn't adapt, right? So you better not be a dinosaur. And whether you like something, you don't like something, um, you know, you, you need to face reality in what you do. And uh, that was that was my approach. Is like, um, you better have a coach that isn't isn't doesn't want to, you know, doesn't want to deny the realities of what we're dealing with. And that that goes across the board in whatever you do.